Hi everyone. Um, it's December now, and uh, we have a nice fire going here in suburban Philadelphia. And I couldn't quite bring myself away from it to share this video with you. So here's here's, here's the fire over there. I couldn't quite think of a way of actually having that in the background while while the video was recording. But um, uh, it, it it's a nice you know uh, wintry spirit over here. Uh, but let's 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 jump into Haskell. Um, okay, so. Um, what I want to talk about today is the derive any class extension. Um, so some of you may be watching the fact that the um, uh, the GHC steering committee is going through the process of defining GHC 2021. Um, and so we're trying to figure out what extensions are the extensions that should be enabled by default in, in some future version of the compiler. I think it would be 9.2 would probably be the first one to, to support this. So um, So as we're thinking about that, um, you know, we're going through all these extensions, trying to figure out: is this safe? Is this dangerous? Um, is this is this good? Um, you know, should users have to opt in? All of these, all of these questions, and um, and and so some people said, "Oh, we derive any class? That's really useful. That should always be on." And uh, I disagreed, and so I want to explain a little bit about about why. Um, so so first, let's write a little module here. Um, and the idea is, is we're going to be defining a class that is for pretty printing. Um, so it's just it's kind of like show, but the idea is that show is really meant to sort of show debugging output, um, and pretty is going to show something nice, nice for users. Um, and yes, you know, I, I'm using string here. I probably shouldn't be using string, but we're just not going to get involved with all of that right now. Um, okay, so so here I have this, and now. Let's say I have a data type T, um, and oh, it has two constructors, int, uh, two constructors, mook T1 and mook T2 for int and bool. Okay, eh, it's not very interesting yet. Um, and, and of course, I can't just say deriving pretty. That's no good. Um, although GHC does suggest to derive any class. It's a bit strange. So, um, uh, what's what's going on here? Well, you know, it doesn't know how to do this. So so if I turn that on, derive any class, and then now compile. Uh, well, first off, that compiles. So that's kind of interesting uh, already. And then here we see no explicit implementation for PPR. Uh, so what that's really about is that this deriving pretty, when if it's using derive any class, it's the same thing as saying instance pretty t, and that's it. Um, so if you have a class with good default methods, for example, so you have these default methods, those will get filled in, and and this will work just fine. Um, but pretty isn't such a class, so we get a warning saying that there's there's no explicit implementation uh, for PPR. So I, I have to say already, I'm uh, this is a little bit confusing for me. This is what I consider a bad failure mode. In that GHC suggested to turn on derive any class. If I don't really know what I'm doing, I might do that, and then no explicit implementation for PPR. It's a little hard to sort of connect all these dots. You really have to know what derive any class is doing, and you have to know that writing this somehow invoking derive any class in order to be to, be, to make sense of of this error message. So one of the things that we're thinking about in GHC 2021 is to avoid situations like this. So already this is a reason perhaps not to include derive any class. Um, but uh, actually, before I go further into why not to include it, um, let me show why derive any class might be at all useful. So we might imagine that, well, if, if we're deriving a show instance uh, uh, for, for some data type, we might also want to be able to get the pretty instance for free. Um, and so the way that we can do that in, in GHC is to use what's called a default signature. And that would look like this. Um, so uh, this here. Let's turn. Let's get rid of this bit and this for now. Let's just compile that and see what happens. Okay. So unexpected default signature. We need to use this other extension default signatures. Okay. And now it works. The idea behind this default is that if I ever write a class, an instance for pretty that doesn't define PPR, then it will try using this definition. But of course, that definition by itself doesn't work. If I comment out this special default thing, um, I'm going to get an error because I don't know that A is a member of the show class. Uh, so instead, 
what I do is I, I write this default signature, which allows me to, de to define sort of extra constraints um, on the default used for, uh, for a certain class. So now what I can say is I can say deriving show, and then indeed I can say instance pretty uh, t. And we compile, and it all compiles, and it actually will work. If I say PPR of muck t of 3, uh, it will print out just fine. And that's because I haven't written any uh, any definition for the method PPR down here, but we get one automatically from this, this default signature with this default implementation up here. This works quite nicely. And it's exactly this that's the motivation for derive any class. This, this is a bit silly in some sense. Wouldn't it be nice just to be able to include pretty like all of my other classes? And so indeed, with derive any class, I can say deriving show pretty, and that compiles, and, and it works just fine. And even if I forget to do deriving show, and I compile, then no instance for show t arising from the deriving clause of a data type declaration. So um, again, maybe some more hints down here would be would would be helpful. But but actually, this is all working quite nicely. So derive any class is useful. Um, the problem is it's also dangerous. So I'm going to do a sort of a silly, somewhat contrived definition of pretty, um, but we're going to try a different version here. And so we're going to say that maybe I want to have custom printing for lists. So here I have another method in pretty that prints out a list. And I'm going to say if I don't define PPR, then we're just going to do that. We're just going to use this, this um, uh, PPR's method to, to, to pretty print a single item. And if we're printing many, then we're going to have x's, and maybe I just sort of print it, you know, using the usual incantation here. All right? We want to print it in in brackets and such. And I'm I'll need to import data dot list to get intercalate. Um, okay. So uh, let me comment this out for now. So that compiles good, and and now let's say I've defined pretty this way. And I write deriving pretty here. This compiles. So what's going on is that my pretty class has a default implementation for both of its two methods. They're defined in terms of each other. This kind of makes sense because if I define one of them, then the other, there's a sensible default in terms of the other. Um, and uh, But yet, when I do this now, if I try to print, we have a problem. Right. This isn't really what we want to see. Um, so this is this is my reason for saying ah this this derive any class is problematic. That yes, a, you know this is a slightly odd definition, but it's not so odd, right? The the built-in eek class uh, does this exact thing with multiple methods all defined in terms of each other. Um, I can't use the eek class to demonstrate derive any class because eek already has some magic uh, uh, deriving uh, for it. Um, so this could be improved if I use a minimal pragma. I could say that the minimal definition must include either PPR or PPRs. And now when I compile, I get a warning. No explicit implementation for either PPR or PPRs. So now we're back into this sort of healthy warning situation. That's good. But you know, not, not every user is going to know about minimal. And so I still think that this is a bit too dangerous. And furthermore, we can do better than either default signatures or derive any class. Um, so let's go. Let's let's go back to the version here. We're going to get rid of PPRs for a sec, and we're going to go back to this version that we want to be able to define PPR in terms of show. Um, and what's what's slightly annoying about the default signatures approach is that I had to bake in this dependence on show right into the class. Maybe there's multiple default ways that I want to generate my, my class method. Um, and so if I want to do that, there's sort of no good way of doing that with default signatures. So instead, I'm going to use deriving... Uh, 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 actually, I can't remember exactly what the syntax is, so uh, we'll, we'll see it in a sec. GHC will suggest it. I want to use deriving via. The idea here is that I can make a new type um, 
which will look like this. So it's just a very simple wrapper, but the key thing of this new type is, is I can write an instance for pretty of show pretty, whoops, a where PPR equals a PPR of show pretty of x equals show of x. And so I'm sure we'll need, if I compile this, oh, oh, that's complaining about this thing down here. I don't want to, I don't want that yet. We're going to need a, a show instance, aren't we? Yes, we are. Okay. But that should probably work just fine. So the idea now is that I've defined this extra type show pretty and, a, and an instance that bases the behavior of the pretty instance on top of the show instance. And this is useful because what I can do is I can say deriving pretty via show pretty of t. And so when I try to compile, now we need, okay, it's deriving via, I thought it was, deriving via, we put that up here. Um, oh, no instance for show t. Well, that makes sense because I can't uh, derive uh, this show pretty, this deriving via, requires a show instance. The idea here is that I'm going to use essentially the shape of this instance, and, as, and, and we could almost think of duplicating this instance shape uh, for t. Uh, but what it's really doing is it's saying that the show pretty of t, how would that show? Well, that would show by using this instance here and using the show, um, uh, the show instance for my data type t. And so it's saying that the, the way that the instance for pretty t should work is the same way that the instance for show pretty t would work, which is written right up here. Um, so for this to work, then I need to be able to say um, show. Is that going to work? No. No. Does that work? No. You'd think I would know how parsing works in this, in this compiler, but I don't. Um, I think maybe if I write deriving show and then separately deriving pretty, I think that works. Yeah, there we go. Um, and so here we're going to derive show sort of the normal way, and then we're going to derive uh, pretty using via this the show pretty. And so now my PPR of muk muk t one of three works just fine, and I don't have this dependency on show baked into my pretty class. Note, I've done nothing, whoops, I've done nothing to the pretty class. Um, and so this is, a, I think, a better replacement for derive any class and is much safer. Uh, so I hope this has been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.